Hi everybody, my name is Fajar Purnama and on this video I would like to demonstrate how to install Moodle on Ubuntu desktop. This video was intended for some members in YTU, Yangon Technology University and MTU, Mandalay Technology University, but this general video might be useful for any one of you. So first off, this is a fresh uh, Ubuntu 16.10 installation, even though I'm running on VirtualBox, but it won't matter much if you don't touch the network, if, you, if this video is only for installing Moodle. So, not considering about the network that you have already access to the internet, the first thing that you ever have to do is after installing a fresh Ubuntu, is get a terminal. So just drag and drop and put the terminal here. And then open the terminal. And here that give you uh, in order to run a command as an administrator you have, or as a root, you have to use the sudo command. There are many other ways but this should do for now so the first thing that you must do is to update your package information and the command is sudo and we use a apt apt is also a package manager i forgot the full abbreviate of the full uh, abbreviation but the full name of this abbreviation but you can search them on google and update and insert your password and this uh, this isn't updating your package but this only updates the package list and after this you can up you can upgrade your package using this command apt upgrade and apt this mean upgrade but this take a long time and consumes a lot of uh, network traffic if it if you don't need it then no need to do it but for me and since i have a fast internet connection then i might as well do it but for now that is not needed to install some package for example you need to type the apt and then the name of the package for example synaptic as a experienced uh, linux user i like to install package using the terminal but if this is your first time or if you are still uh, starting i recommend you to use a packet manager like synaptic Sorry, wrong command. apt install. And then here are the following additional packages that will be installed. Here are some suggested packages. You can write them alongside the synaptic. But this is just a suggestion. There is no need to follow. And this is the new package that will be installed. And then we want to continue yes or no. We type yes. Okay, now we got synaptic, then we can type synaptic in the dashboard, it's the packet manager. Then we can open this, and password, and finally we can install the package that we need to run Moodle. To run Moodles, you need three basic packages. One is a web server, 
the web server is called Apache 2. I like to use Apache 2. And this one just click and mark for installation. And when you mark this for installation, these are the package that will be installed alongside Apache 2. Apache 2 is the web server. And other than and other than a web server, you need a database server. I use a MySQL. Let me just enlarge. Okay, here I use a MySQL server mark for installation and after that you need a PHP language install PHP programming language since a uh, Moodle is based on PHP programming is created based on PHP so here there is a PHP and install And then once you got everything you want to install, you can apply for installation. And this will remind you of what will be installed. This is what is not changed, meaning that it's able to be upgraded, but there's nothing will change. Here you can show details or hide details and then apply. Here you can show the details. First is the package manager will download the packages. After that, we will install the packages. Now the it will configure for the MySQL server. Remember that the MySQL username, the I may say the username is root and here you will set a password for root for me i don't want to forget so i'll just make the same password as my login but this password is up to you and if you click detail this is what happened in the command line if you use apt while waiting, why don't we see what APT is? APT in Linux. And here is uh, the, the package manager is installing the package that we chose and apt is called it's a uh, it stands for advanced packaging tool used by debian ubuntu and such and while waiting after you download all this uh, necessary package necessary for moodle you can download the moodle package on its site Go to downloads and here the latest version is 3.2. As a Linux user, I prefer to use a uh, .tar .gz, but for universal, maybe a zip. Here is an MD5. If you want to check the integrity of the file, but and. Um, I don't feel like doing it now and mostly unnecessary but if you really are not confident in the security then you can check the integrity now we will download the Moodle so download open the folder ok 
can let's close nope okay so the packages have been successfully installed and back to the terminal to start the to start the web server you have to go to first of course as administrator the the services uh, folder is located on etc init.d and here if you press tap tap it will show you type of servers available to start but for now yeah, there is uh, another way you can just type service if you forget the command just press tap tap and it will show itself and if you press F that it will give you suggestion of what to do. Now remember it's Apache, if you forget how to spell Apache, just tap tap and it will give you a suggestion. Here is an uh, Apache too. And then tap tap again, this is good in Ubuntu since it show you what you can do. Whether you want to start, stop or restart. Here let's start the web server. Then, so once you have your web server, you will have a web server in your local host. Local host. This is your front page, or you can type the address of the web server, or you can type some IP address of your interface for example this is the IP address let's give it a shot and there you go but for now we're not sticking into the networking just how to install Moodle on Ubuntu and after that, we need uh, to start the database server. It's MySQL. Start. And one more thing. No. Okay, so let me show you that the location of the web server directory is in computer for www HTML. And this is actually the front page of your web server. However, this location is uh, only permitted to be modified by administrator, so you cannot do anything here. Your file manager is only a regular user, so you need to open a file manager as a root as an administrator. So that so to do that in a terminal, of course, to open a semi-sector, you need to write sudo and the file manager in Ubuntu is called Nautilus. And there we go. Now, first thing is we want to copy our Moodle, um, Moodle zip file into the web server folder it's in other location computer far or if you are using terminal is actually on the is actually on the latest slash so this is the 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 out this kind of slash is the out is the most upset part outside part of the directory and the web server is in far wwhtml and this index.html is actually this page. Okay. So now we're back. I'm going to copy the zip here and extract the zip in this folder. close 
now you have a wood uh, file uh, directory called Moodle you can change the name as you like but I prefer to keep it this way for now so here it's already the code is already well written we don't need to do anything just to access this folder through the web browser so it's a local host and then type Moodle and we're visiting the Moodle directory and automatically we go to Moodle on install.php and here is the step of the installation for Moodle just next take a look you want your address to be localhost at Moodle for now I'll leave it like this you want your Moodle directory here okay and you want your data directory on far www Moodle data but here the, the installation will complain that it it doesn't have a permission to write on this folder so if you're not worried about security you can just you can just have this folder open for all information just open everything create and delete create and delete just let open everything if you don't worry about security just open the permission folder folder but for me i don't need to do that so it wants to create a folder called model data in part of www far slash www and to make a writable data for uh, directory for the Moodle for the web server so now we'll create a folder for Moodle data remember that the names have to be the same this is the location for WW and the directory name is Moodle data and then right click properties and change the permission for me I said the owner i'll keep the owner as root but the group as uh, i change the rule the group to ww min data ww min data is uh, the web server group and i want the web server to be able to create and delete files and that's it and then next yes and choose the database server you're using so there are many kinds of database server but this time we use mysql okay the database host is local host i want the name to be moodle this one is up to you remember I'll keep this local host for now and the user don't forget that the super user is root that the, when the first time when we install the MySQL with the database server and the password you have set ah man oh sure you can look at my password in okay. here And here's the table prefix and then next and then uh, Moodle will complain that complain that PHP has not been properly configured with MySQL extension so we need to install a package called PHP MySQL
okay i almost missed it. this one so that this is the driver for php to access the database and then apply for installation okay it's already installed but nothing has changed what you need to do is to open a new terminal and you need to restart the web server okay i got that now we have restarted the web server then on the web browser you just type you click next again now there is another problem Moodle made an attempt to save your config configuration and file in root of your Moodle installation the installer script was not able to automatically create this means that the Moodle does not have permission to modify the Moodle folder so let's do the same thing on your on the Moodle directory give the web server create and delete access and that's that now we go back to previous and then next again and then there is another problem that Moodle requires the XML PHP extension so we need to go to package manager and install the PHP XML Okay, after you install, you need you need to again to restart the web server. For me, I don't need to click. Just press the up button, and then it repeats what I did before. And again, here press enter to refresh. Don't refresh this place enter. No, I don't know. Either way, maybe it's okay. Okay, this is taking quite long. Okay. Now, here is a copyright notice. And if you have understood them, then agree okay here are some checklists the green ones are okay but for the red one it means that it must be installed for Moodle to work for the yellow one is an optional but it says for best result is to install these packages so here you are for example you need a PHP extension GD if you want to see the details just click this link and it will go to the Moodle page about what is a GD for example if I'm running a Linux or a Ubuntu here you can download and install GD using this method this technically mean you know, this have the same meaning that we need to go to the packet manager and find PHP GD and here it is one and look at the other now we need a PHP curl MB string let me do them in alphabetical order we need a PHP curl
and then the string okay what else oh I and I miss one PHP so and then I need a PHP XML RPC Finally, PHP zip. Okay, that's everything I think. And then install the packages. Apply. again after installing the package you have to restart the web server and then press enter again on the web browser and then finally everything is okay and ready for installation continue Now we wait for a while and let's see success is success and here are some logs eventually this will stop indicating that this that the installation is successful. Okay, now continue and there you go Moodle is installed on your web server Okay, I'm uh, let me make the username the same since I might forget and I'll use the same password the first name is me and the surname is me and an email address and we have just used my local laboratory address for now yes it is down and then pasar the country I came from Indonesia Server time zone now. The my time zone is I'm in Tokyo. And then additional names. I don't need optional. I don't need as well. And update the profile. 
Okay, this I forgot that we need at least one on of a numeric such as. Okay, then I'll make a very strong password. And that's that. Now, here is the setting for the front page. I will name the full site name is uh, my name for Jagpur Nama Moodle on Ubuntu 16.10. Then let me name it FP. FP. FP model on on you. You be empty. Sixteen point ten. Okay. On page summary, I don't need the time zone is Asia Tokyo for me. Then authentication is up to you. You want to disable self registration or you want to enable either way is up to you. Save changes and there you have your Moodle ready to use. Okay, to create a course, go to Site Demonstration and in Site Demonstration go to Courses and then Manage Courses and Categories. You can make a new category but for now I think this is okay and create a new course the course full name will be my first course on ebnt pb for short name Okay, I'll make a long one. On Ubuntu 16.10 virtual box course on Ubuntu TV. Then miscellaneous feasible, and here you can set the course start date and the course end date. And course ID, this one is optional, but let me make one. There's a description, and this is the if you have a summer. If you write your summary in a text, you can upload them here instead of writing them here. In course format, your course format can be in form of a topic. And here are many options, but this is up to you. And here's something about maximum upload size. If you're finished with everything, then save and display. Enroll user, proceed to course content. Next, next, this is the tour. If you are not familiar with Moodle, okay, an up tour. 
as we see before that that we are limited to upload a certain number of uh, a certain size of uh, file if you want to upload more you have to go to the file for in etc this is usually the not far in the file system root you have here is the location in your computer go to etc and here there is a php in this folder is where most of the configurations are 7.0 depends on you do on your version and then go to apache and here it is php.in on this php.in search for post one okay go down go down here it is the post max size is 8 megabyte do you want to increase it or not i'll raise it to maybe 256 mega and then the next thing that you need to find is a file Here it is, the file upload is on and upload max size is 2 megabyte. This is where you need to change if you want to add more. Maybe for me it's a 200 meg around 200 megabyte and the max file to be uploaded once. And if done then save. Don't forget that you need to be an administrator to edit this. And then, of course, restart your web server. Okay, and then let's say again, in the site demonstration, not in the site demonstration, in the course demonstration, it's settings. Here. Here it is, previously it's only 2 megabytes and now it leads the file script now I can upload up to 256 which is the site upload limit. And that's one. And if you remember, wait, let me go back. That this is the, that the course in the form of topic. If you want to change it, you can change it into the form of a week in the course format or any other format for example weekly format for example let's make it four weeks and there are many settings here that even for me is too much to remember but you can explore them more save and display and here you have your course if you want to add some materials on your course you can turn editing on and now um, here is the first one here is the week one week two week three let's suppose i want to add uh, there are four types of uh, module that is famous to add in Moodle the first module is a material module which can either be lessons or the simplest one will be page. Lesson is uh, more complicated but it will give you more feature but for now for a simple one just a page. For example this is a test material. And then maybe you can write look at this picture. So you, you can upload the picture or you can you can upload the picture 
or you can enter a URL you have a picture on a website maybe on your Google Drive on your Dropbox or on Flickr or whatever on but if you do not do then you can upload your own picture let me look for a default picture here ah, there's no picture in Ubuntu how sad really there's none and oh well let me download a picture then Ubuntu give me a picture okay I'm borrowing your logo and by the way while I'm here let me tell you something as well google.com in normal circumstances just don't look in picture is uh, actually illegal if you want to download a picture that is legal you need the picture to be licensed as Go to the tools, use the right license as the label for reuse or any one of these. Label as Creative Common. And this will show a picture that is legally for you to download. But that's up to you though. For example, let me download this picture. And view image. to sign up view nah, no thanks let me look for another one two is right okay no oh, just right click this and save image and then I'll save it to Ubuntu logo save and then here I can upload a picture, upload the file browse you can change the name if you want to but I'll leave it like this and upload this file and then you want to auto size or this is the alignment and then save the image Okay, image must have a description. Okay, description not necessary for now. Now here you have a, you can right click, no you cannot. You can click this two times and you can change the size whenever you want. And then that's it. Which? Sorry, wrong place. This is the description. I don't need the description. It was supposed to be in the content. Where was the file that I uploaded? then let's upload again and here and you can make your own contents here are some features and that's up to you you can make you can write your materials here and save and return to course and let me turn my editing off the students will see it like this 
and they will have a material. Let's go back. Sorry, wrong one. Turn editing on. Under then materials, there is a discussion. There is a forum module. In the forum module, is a module to engage on discussion. For example, discussion. here and do carefully check at the settings no no need save and return to course and then go and the set this then don't forget to make a setting do you want the student discussion locking Okay. Here are some settings. Ratings. Okay, this I don't really know. But normally the students cannot make a discussion. So you need to make one discussion here for example is this about pictures for example discuss about image online and display start if you want this you can but up to you just look at the setting on your own and see which suits you and here I made a discussion by me and anyone can make a reply edit and whatever or you can add some question in this discussion forum more like a uh, Facebook and stuff Okay, uh, the third one, the third famous module is an uh, assignment module. So, instead of for you to go around the students and you have to meet them face to face and ask them to meet, to meet somewhere to give an assignment or for them to hand out the assignment, but using Moodle on public, there is no need. You can just make an assignment block, for example, just a simple assignment one, and the description submit your assignment here. You can attach some additional file. You can allow submission from this one is up to you, but if you do this then there is no deadline for example but you can read that all of this submission can be file submission or online text this is also up to you and what limit and whatever and you can look at all the settings yourself save and return so then for example when so for example when for example as myself hmm. sorry I need a student to make this so can I view this as a student And it's setting no, I can't view as a student 
Then let's make another user called students. To make a go to the site administration. Mm, I'll do that later. So let's go back to your course. In your dashboard, there might not be because you need to customize this dashboard yourself, customize this page, but go to site home and you will see your course. Okay, I don't need a tool. Thank you. And before I demonstrate your uh, perspective as a student, why don't I make a, a few more blocks? The next popular block is the quiz blue. Uh, quiz module or a block you can say for example I make this a test quiz that's up to you I'm in grade layout this is just the setting though uh, then save and display and then uh, and you have a test quiz module but no quiz has been no question has been added to add a question you edit the quiz and then you add a new question a random question from question bank but let's just try add a new question there are many kind of question you can make one of the most simplest question is the uh, multiple choice. The question name is, uh, for example, uh, an addition. And here is the question you can make what is one plus one and the default mark you can make a grade you want it to be one ten or one hundred this is the mark that you want to give up to you you want to make that there is one answer only or there is a multiple answer but for now I just make it one answer there's many possibilities so you can uh, explore this yourself for example the first choice is okay so let's make the default mark I'll make it 100 1 plus 1 is 1 1 plus 1 is 8 1 plus 1 is 2 this is the correct one this is a wrong answer, I make a none or you can make a penalty for a wrong answer <coughs> wait sorry this is two, this is a feedback and the feedback is correct then the second choice may be one which is wrong or you want to give something like one point Eight, nine, which is close to two, you might want to give him a 50 60 percent of um, grade, and maybe this one is almost. And there is a choice four. Wait, sorry, sorry, wrong box. Maybe this one is wrong. The feedback is uh, this one is almost. Maybe choice four is uh, you make a 10 and that is very wrong. You might want to give a penalty up to your choice and wrong and very wrong. And 
here some combined feedback multiple tries you can check penalty for each try There are many options, but you can explore them yourself. Save changes, and you have one question. You can add more question and whatever, and save. And there. This is the this is the four popular module that you should use one is to make a learning con one is to make a materials the second is a discussion forum the third is an assignment and the last is a quiz there are also other modules that are easy to use for example there's a chat choice and i don't know this one but chat is easy to use there is also survey just to make a survey nothing more and you can make a book a book type you can write a pdf and there is a url if you want to make a url for example search and the url will be google and this is only a link here we have to be full and then save and return okay and then another one if you don't want to make your one if you already have your prepared material in a type of file let's see uh, is there an example here for example documents yeah, empty oh don't i have something okay why don't i don't look my own presentation then my presentation is called in my current content content demonstration and extending okay on slide Fine, I'll go to research gate. And I wonder if I may here it is, my slide. And let's download. Okay, I'll use my own account. By the way, what's my account? Save file and it's in PDF. And now let me upload that file 